In this video, we're talking about soon-to-be tropical storm Claudette as our third tropical depression is tracking north in the Gulf of Mexico. The National Hurricane Center predicts landfall somewhere south of New Orleans and a big flooding problem. Then, we're talking about the enhanced risk for severe weather today in the Ohio Valley as things are starting to look very interesting. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Before we get into the meteorological analysis of all these storms that are coming up, we do have an official statement from storm seeker correspondent Echo Hall. Echo, take it away. Very riveting stuff there, Echo. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to get back to work here, and we're going to talk about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, we've got two big areas of interest. We've got this big cluster of uh, storms and clouds moving through Indiana and Ohio. That's going to continue to move east and set the stage for a big severe weather outbreak today uh, in Indiana and Ohio, possibly portions of Kentucky, uh, Pennsylvania, and, and Illinois. And we're going to talk much more about that as we go later on into the video. But we're going to start start off by talking about our tropical depression down here. This is now officially tropical depression three, and it is expected to become a tropical storm at this point, and it will be named tropical storm Claudette. And as you can see here, the red cone takes this storm all the way up into literally straight across New Orleans, and then eventually into southern portions of Mississippi, and then right across Birmingham as it heads up the southeastern portion of the Appalachian Mountains as we go into the future. Currently, the central pressure with this storm is 1,007 millibars. Maximum wind speed is going to be around 34 miles an hour, and it's moving north at 14 miles an hour hour so it's still got some time here out in open waters to intensify and that's what we expect is going to happen as we go forward and we can take a better look at that on the weather models all right actually before we get into the models we're going to look at some official data some information from the national hurricane center uh, just so you can get a better idea graphically of where the storm's going to go and what the impacts are going to be okay so here's the official track of the storm we do expect that it's going to become an official tropical storm sometime later today probably around the time this video goes up or maybe a little bit later and remember all that's required for it to be considered a tropical storm are sustained winds around 39 miles an hour. So right now we're at like 34 miles an hour, so it doesn't have much to go. I'd say in the next update, we'll probably figure out that there are some, you know, gustier winds blowing out there. And then this thing's gonna track straight north and it's gonna make landfall uh, somewhere around Morgan City, Louisiana, just south and west of New Orleans, around one or 2 a.m. on Saturday, tonight, okay? And then over the next 12 hours, it's gonna slowly churn across Louisiana into Hattiesburg, Mississippi area. Okay, the center of circulation will be right over Hattiesburg uh, around 1 p.m. Saturday and then 1 a.m. Sunday. We're expecting this to only be as far as into southwestern or south central portions of Alabama, south of Birmingham at this point. And then it's going to go over Birmingham and by 1 p.m. on Sunday, it's going to be in northern Georgia. Okay, so uh, if you're looking at this cone of uncertainty, uh, this right here is the most likely track, but anywhere inside of this cone is where the storm could go. So it could actually track a little bit further south than this. It could track a little bit further further north than this. If you're on the southern side of this, that you're going to see the most impacts, okay? I think the number one threat we're going to have with this uh, tropical storm is definitely going to be flooding, all right? There's going to be a ton of moisture, a ton of rain out there, and we can actually see that on one of the National Hurricane Center's graphics. And as you can see here, especially on the coast from New Orleans to Mobile, Alabama, all the way into the western panhandle of Florida, we're expecting six to ten inches of rain possibly in a pretty short period of time, so uh, that's definitely going to cause major flooding. And then out from there, we're talking about four to six inches of rain and a widespread two to four inches. And this is actually pretty conservative compared to what the models are showing. A lot of the models are actually showing widespread five, six inches of rain all the way up into central Alabama and Georgia. And if that was to happen, we're talking about a very significant flooding situation in the southeast. Uh, so I would say go ahead and get ready. If you're in Louisiana, uh, southern Mississippi, much of Alabama, pretty much all of Georgia, uh, go ahead and make pre preparations for a possible flooding situation, especially if you live in a flood prone area. Uh, the greatest flash flood risk, and I do agree with this, is going to be right here uh, in southern Alabama, southeastern uh, Mississippi, uh, extreme southeastern New Orleans, and then once again in the western panhandle of Florida and just that little bit of Georgia over there. Now, since this is a tropical storm and not a hurricane, we're only expecting the winds to be going, you know, 40, 50, maybe 60 miles an hour in some places. And really, the widespread winds are going to be right around the 30 mile an hour area. So uh, there's not going to be this giant northeast quad 
quadrant of the storm that's driving storm surge up into uh, areas of New Orleans and places like that. We are still expecting two to three feet of storm surge, but that's nothing uh, to panic about. Okay, so now that we've looked at all that official stuff from the National Hurricane Center, let's take a look at the weather models now. All right, now we're back with our good old trusty HRRR model. Uh, if you wanna keep up with the date and time, it's always gonna be uh, displayed above my head. We're starting at 10 a.m. today. You can see our cluster of storms. Our, uh, our storm is trying to organize at this point, and we're gonna put this further into motion and watch as it just blows up. Look at all that convection. Look at all of the moisture. This is the simulated water vapor imagery, and I do believe this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. We're gonna have some very strong convection out here in the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, on the eastern quadrant of this, once again, there's gonna be a huge inflow area where just uh, the rainfall is going to be incredible. I would not be surprised in extreme southeastern Louisiana, maybe southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, we get some places that see, uh, you know, double digit uh, rain totals over 10 inches, possibly well over 10 inches after this is all said and done. Here we are around landfall. And as you can see, this thing doesn't, you know, most of the time when storms like this make landfall, uh, they immediately start to diminish and start to weaken. This one, it's having uh, what we like to call a brown ocean effect where uh, the storm is still acting like it's over the ocean after it makes landfall. And I guess that's because it's pulling up so much energy with it. Uh, but we do expect that for it to continue to intensify, or at least the low pressure system will likely continue to deepen as it moves on into Mississippi and Alabama. This doesn't change anything for you guys. Still, the main threat here is going to be heavy rain as this moves through. And as you can see, it's going to go all the way up into Alabama and eventually into Georgia. And it's just going to keep going that way. Now, on the northern side, I know there's a lot of people in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky and uh, Western uh, Virginia and West Virginia that are concerned about this. I really don't think there's anything to be concerned about. The, our main threat with this is going to be the rain, especially the further south you are. If you're in extreme southeastern Tennessee, uh, the flash flooding risk is there for you uh, and maybe some gusty winds. But once again, this is, this is mainly an event for the deep south in Georgia, Atlanta, and Mississippi and Louisiana. Okay, let's take a look at our simulated radar so we can kind of see what those rain bands are going to look like and just look at how intense that is. And it's just just training over the same areas over and over again. Uh, whenever you see, you know, storms like this associated with the tropical system, it's not the same as like a storm that would be out here in Kansas or Missouri, okay? You know, you see these reds and these yellows and these purples all the time on radar and stuff, and even on the HRRR model, but it's different during a tropical system like this. There's just going to be a gully washer of rain uh, for possibly 12 hours or more uh, in just the same locations here in southeastern Louisiana all the way into the Panhandle of uh, Florida. Any place down here that isn't properly, uh, you know, irrigated in a way that, that can handle that is going to have very, very significant problems with flooding. And as you can see, that heavy rain uh, goes all the way up into Alabama and Georgia. And you can still see the circulation all the way on Sunday, June 20th at 2 a.m. Uh, this is expected to still be a tropical depression at this point as it continues off to the northeast. Here's the NAM three kilometers outlook on how much rain can be expected. Once again, we're some somebody down here is going to get 15, 16 uh, inches of rain right there on the border of uh, Mississippi and Alabama, possibly around Mobile, Alabama, uh, even a southeastern Louisiana. Look at all those places that are getting 10, 11, 12 inches of rain. Uh, and this is going to bleed into a central Alabama as well. It looks like Birmingham is going to be kind of like the axis of, you know, south of Birmingham, just big time flooding event. North of Birmingham, eh, nothing much. <laughs> According to the NAM three kilometer, even Southeast Tennessee doesn't get much rain at all from this. And uh, I kind of disagree with that. I think there will be some wraparound moisture that comes up there. Uh, but the, remember, if you're uh, north of this line right here, your odds of having any significant impacts from this storm are low. Now, let's talk about the severe weather in the Ohio Valley. All right, back to the HRRR, and we are looking at convective available potential energy, okay? This is the fuel needed for storms to form, and uh, this was at about 6 a.m. this morning, as you can tell over here where the enhanced risk is. Uh, by the way, here's a look at the Storm Prediction Center's uh, outlook for the enhanced risk. This is going to include Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Columbus, Dayton, uh, even, you know, all the way up to Cleveland. So if you're in that enhanced risk today, pay attention because these storms are going to be pretty gnarly. Probably wondering why. Look, look here, there's no, there's no fuel. There's no cape. 
Where's the cape, Ryan? Well, it's coming. Check this out. As we go later on into the day, here we are around 10 a.m. You see it build it up over there in Illinois and Indiana, and it just kind of really infiltrates into the northwestern portions of Ohio all the way through central Indiana around 5 p.m. today, and we could see some places near 5,000, maybe even 6,000 joules per kilogram of cape uh, in the area where convection will occur and cause these storms today. That means that these storms are going to go up quick, okay? Uh, it's, it's probably going to be pretty sunny outside. You, you're probably going to think I'm lying to you if you live out here. It's 3 p.m. What the heck? Where's these storms, Ryan? Well, what you don't know is there's a million cannon launchers above your head getting ready to go off. And <laughs> basically, that's what, you know, 5,000 joules per kilogram of cape is. Uh, now, not everybody in uh, northeastern Ohio or northwestern Ohio or uh, central Indiana is going to see a very significant severe thunderstorm today, but the odds are uh, that most of you will, okay? And we can take a better look at that if we look at the simulated radar. So here we are around 4 p.m. on Friday. Once again, most of us down here, maybe it's a little cloudy, sun's peeking through. It feels like a nice day. It's warm, it's humid. Uh, but what's happening here is we've got this little leftover boundary from the storms that we had yesterday. They've just, it's just been kind of trailing across all day. And that boundary is gonna catch some of that humid air, some of that moist air and all that convective energy. And it's gonna blow up some storms. Check this out. Here we are, 5 p.m. Look at this, supercell thunderstorms likely and extreme northwestern Ohio. This is near Defiance or south and west of Toledo, okay? Uh, at this point, uh, between uh, four, five, six, maybe all the way up to seven o'clock today, this is where the tornado threat is the highest, okay? The tornado threat is kind of low today. We're not looking for widespread tornado outbreak, but I would say in uh, northwestern Ohio, all the way down into possibly uh, north central Ohio, uh, near the Findlay area and Lima area, I do believe that th that's where the most uh, enhanced risk for tornadoes is today. The, the atmosphere is actually pretty ripe and, and pretty uh, favorable for cyclonic rotation in the form of tornadoes. But the problem is, you'll see here in a second, this is quickly going to form into a line of storms because there is such an, a huge amount of cape, such a huge amount of energy. So many storms are going to pop up and take advantage of all that energy. And it's likely that we won't see discrete supercells that are capable of producing tornadoes. Right here at the main beginning portion of this, I do think that anybody that's in this area right here uh, needs to be uh, on high alert uh, for possible possibly seeing uh, some tornadoes today. This is quickly going to dive to the south and east around 6 p.m. today. This will be north of Columbus, okay? And uh, we've also got a pretty good cluster of storms forming over here in Indiana uh, near Muncie, okay? And this is exactly what I'm talking about. At this point, uh, we're going from a supercellular event to a multicellular event. And then right after that, we're going into a linear mode of storms uh, where the main threat is going to be straight line damaging winds. Right there we are. Look at this, 7 p.m. tonight, a very strong line of storms moving into the Columbus area now. Uh, we're going to see a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings out of this. Big hail is likely. Uh, and, and once again, the, the main threat here is going to be those straight line damaging winds. And if we scoot this on out to 11 p.m., you can see this line is like dipping down into West Virginia, western portions of uh, Pennsylvania. High winds are possible out there too. And then we've got all this convection on the backside that more storms are forming up in central Indiana all the way out into western Illinois. Look at this, even back here into Iowa, uh, northern portions of Illinois, we're seeing these storms pop up. And, and by the time we get into 3, 4 a.m., a lot of these are going to weaken significantly. Uh, we may see some severe weather down here in West Virginia tonight. Uh, but I think the majority, the biggest portion of what we're looking at today is going to be in Ohio, as that seems to be where the highest wind threat is and also the highest tornado threat is. And speaking of tornado threat, here's the significant tornado parameter outlook. And as you can see, right when those storms first pop up up here, we're, we're still dealing with, you know, possibly maybe a six or a seven out of 10 on the uh, SIGTOR uh, parameters. Uh, so once again, that 5% tornado risk is pretty justified from the Storm Prediction Center. And I believe that's what we're gonna be dealing with today. So if you live in Indianapolis, Columbus, Cincinnati, Findlay, Ohio, Lima, Ohio, Fort Wayne, Indiana, anywhere up in that area right there, I would say uh, be on high alert today. Uh, there's a possible uh, chance for some tornadoes and also a much more likely chance of just some uh, gnarly thunderstorms that have straight line damaging winds, cloud to ground lightning, localized flash flooding and all that good stuff. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to be trying to keep you guys updated on Twitter tonight. I don't know if I'll be going live, uh, but, uh, I will definitely be on Twitter. Make sure you follow me over there and, uh, yeah, uh, we, it, we're, let, let's do it, son. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I will see you uh, again tomorrow. We're going to continue talking about the impacts from this tropical storm and, uh, yeah, thank
Thanks for being here. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.